in my first <coughs> book, uh, I was uh, pretty tough on people, you know, asking that we try to get everybody to get their cholesterol under 150. And that would, for those that easily did that, that would work. It, it's kind of a false way of getting it there by just taking a gorilla dose of statin and then getting your cholesterol down. That doesn't work because, look, <clears throat> no number has ever caused heart disease. Heart disease is caused by what is passing through your lips every day that is going to destroy the ability of your endothelial cells to make sufficient nitric oxide. So in the new era, in the next book, we'll probably have to say something like this. Sure, if you're naturally, with the way you're eating, your cholesterol is under 150, you are going to be protecting yourself. But suppose that we had a situation where I had a thousand persons who were totally 100 percent compliant with the artery, the, with the disease, excuse me, <laughs> uh, with the nutrition form that I'm asking, whole food, plant-based nutrition. Those thousand people, they're going to be some that have a cholesterol of 110, some will be at 140, maybe 160, 180, 200, or 220. Now, could, what, did that, what does that tell us? That tells us that each of us individually has a thermostat on our liver that more or less decides how much cholesterol that we're going to get. Because if, if these patients are not eating any food that are going to encourage the liver to make cholesterol, then the liver will make the cholesterol that it feels it needs. And I am increasingly not fearful for patients in that category, providing that they are maintaining the integrity of their endothelial fortress. So if somebody is eating absolutely beautifully, not in any way doing anything except strengthening and strengthening and strengthening their endothelial cells, even if they have a cholesterol of 190 or 200, they can't injure themselves because they have so protected and strengthened their endothelial cell, it is not being, there's no crack or fissure or opening or weakness where that cholesterol can sleep, slip into there and start this cascade of inflammation. So um, now on the other hand, when we do have patients with this familial cholesterol where everything is over three or 400, now we, we really have a problem. We've got to do what we can to help those patients lower their cholesterol. You may want to do some, possibly use some medication in those patients unless they're absolutely insistent uh, on not taking it. And in that case, uh, you can get them to really tighten, tighten up the, uh, the good, whole food, plant-based diet in ways that offer them the greatest uh, the greatest assurance is they're doing everything they can to strengthen their endothelial fortress. Uh, the reason I have trouble with the government levels is that they really, uh, it's really, <clears throat> you're mi they're missing the entire point. Uh, again, I'll say it. Um, and I apologize for being redundant, but no, no number has ever caused heart disease. And if they say it's 200 and then it's 130 for your LDL or something like that, there's no mention at all there, none whatsoever, of your endothelial cells and protecting them. So if somebody happens to have a cholesterol that's over 150, but they're absolutely not eating anything that is going to injure their endothelial cells, that they're building their endothelial fortress, then I, then I think they, uh, they're, they're protected. But I think just to, to throw out a number and not explain what really causes this disease is, is not really telling the whole story. Yeah, I think if people don't have heart disease, but they want to eat nuts, and seeds, that's, that's fine. But these have an awful lot of saturated fat, so I guess I can be a little bit of an out, outlier here. And uh, if I have patients seriously ill with heart disease, 
I do not want them to eat peanut butter and cashew sauce and nuts. How many people do you know who will eat one nut? Nuts are highly addicting, and they have a lot of saturated fat. And so right now that we are getting absolutely very exciting and stunning results with the patients that follow our program. And so I have yet to see a single program on nuts where you take patients who are seriously ill with cardiovascular disease and pour on the nuts and all the seeds and the cashew sauce and the peanut butter and have them halt and reverse their disease. I've not seen that. But for patients who don't have heart disease, I don't have a restriction on their having those. But for the patients that do, I, I feel very cautious. And if down the line, it's, I'm proven to be wrong, I have not hurt my patients. Well, I, I think there are multiple studies that clearly show that dairy is one of the worst things you can do in terms of what it can do for tumor, tumor formation and what it can do for atherosclerosis. Can you, imagine, can you imagine a patient with heart disease being asked to eat ice cream and cheese and yogurts No, I, and butter? I mean, it just is absurd. Now, dairy is a, dairy is a food that has got to go. That's <laughs> now, just in wrapping this up, the reason that I, uh, the reason that I find that I'm perhaps uh, more passionate than ever about medicine is because I really feel that we are at the moment on the cusp of what I call a seismic revolution in health. And this seismic revolution in health is going to come about because, well, we've talked about heart disease today. Whole food plant-based nutrition not only gets rid of heart disease, it gets rid of hypertension, it gets rid of diabetes, it gets rid of <coughs> high cholesterol, it gets rid of the risk of stroke of vascular dementia, Crohn's disease, osteoporosis, and uh, ulcerative colitis, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus and multiple sclerosis, allergies, asthma, kidney disease. I mean, the list goes on. We have never before, never before have we had in medicine's toolbox a therapy that is so safe, so void of hideous side effects, so inexpensive, and it's up to us in the profession to find the will and the grit and the determination to share with patients the lifestyle and most specifically the nutritional literacy <clears throat> that will empower them as the, lo the locus of control to absolutely annihilate 80% of chronic illness. Thank you.